I'm Samantha with the Heart Gallery, and I wanted to introduce this beautiful family to you. These are my friends, Lauren and Cliff Caldwell, and they're multiple children. <laughs> Can you guys tell me a little bit about your family from the beginning? Sure. We, um, when, we were, when Cliff and I were first married, we really um, weren't even that fired up about children, and I was pursuing my master's degree in psychology and hoping to go straight on to the PhD and Cliff was working on the ranch and we thought children you know would eventually happen well uh, we, we definitely weren't planning on a huge family um, and by the standards I don't guess this is huge compared to what we've seen with some friends of ours so um, I guess things just shifted when we began to pray and say Lord what have you got for us and he encouraged me to lay down the pursuit of um, the counseling degree I was looking for and shortly after that um, I became pregnant with Caroline and then shortly after that God came along and after boom boom like that we really we thought wow we're finished that was good <laughs> you know we're done and for um, a couple of years after that, there would just be a spark in my heart because I was adopted um, as a child with uh, my parents from a, a divorce situation, but given the legal name, and that really mattered to me. And But I did keep in touch with all of my family. And so it had always just been a seed in my heart that I'd wanted to do. And we've done a lot of missions work in Kenya, and we always thought it would be international adoption. You know, that spark in my heart, and that wasn't really... Cliff's heart to begin with at all. What was your heart like, Cliff? How did adoption even come into the picture for you? Initially, it really scared me. Uh, to, to be really honest, it really scared me a lot. And, uh, it, it took me several years to warm up the, the idea of adoption. Uh, we, uh, like I said, like Lauren said, we prayed about it, prayed about it, and finally my heart warmed up to it, and that's uh, uh, to the idea. And I, Felt the call, and just knew that it was real. Uh, I can't remember when we came to Lauren one day. I came to Lauren one day and said, "Okay, we'll do this." And so uh, then it took us a couple of years really before we uh, before we finally did adopt Sophia. So Sophia's adoption was a little bit different than Ty's adoption. Can you explain the difference? Absolutely. Well, Sophie, we adopted her from birth. At that birth, uh, Lauren was actually. Uh, actually got to carry her from the delivery room to the nursery. So uh, uh, she has been uh, our baby from, from birth. Yeah. And she was also a private adoption. And we went through an agency in Austin because we really couldn't find any agencies here in San Angelo. So um, it was through our homeschool co-op that we got this email and I held on to that email for a really long time. And we went through Marywood in Austin, which is now no longer, so we're glad we got in and got out when we did it. Um, and so it was a, definitely a different process than with Ty. And we overcame so much of the fear and the unknown because of, of something you've got to know when you adopt is there are things that you have in your heart that you don't even realize that come up. Um, like, wow, they don't have all my physical features. Or I can't say, oh, you look just like your grandfather, or this happens. And but the Lord just works that out to where it doesn't matter. You get to see them blossom, and they add to your family. Um, and then when it came time to adopt again, we weren't really considering it so much. But the Lord just started to move. And I remember I was watching a, um, I was actually just reading you know, the Bible one morning, and I came across the Isaiah 54 scripture. It says, you know, enlarge your tent pegs. And I know that that has Israel consequences, and that's for them, but, you know, a lot of the stuff's for us also. And it, it just resonated with me. And I went straight from there to turn on the television to watch a man um, named Lou Engel speak. And he said the same verse and was talking about it in relation to adoption, and it just lit that fire again. But I wrote it down because I thought, wow, we had such a battle the first time in our hearts to come together and agree and have it. And of course, Sophie's the best advertising for adoption there is. 
um, who wouldn't want to do that again? And that's what I say. That's what another reason we adopted. Cause we enjoy these two so much. Who wouldn't want more? Um, so I just wrote it down because I didn't know if it was we were supposed to physically adopt or if it was a, more of a spiritual revelation for me. And the more it started moving, I went in and talked to Cliff a couple of weeks later. Actually, it was probably a couple of months because I like Mary, you know, kind of pondered it in my heart for a while. And then went into Cliff and was like, hey, what do you think about adopting again? And he just looked at me like, what? And I said, and furthermore, I really think we're supposed to do it through CPS because not everybody can afford to do it through private adoption. And it can't, why is it so hard? It's ridiculous that it would be so hard to adopt somebody. And we've done it before. And if we've, we know the private adoption rate, but if we can figure out how to do it through CPS, then maybe we can help other people do it. And that's really been the case um, where it's, once again, we've looked to try to adopt and no information. Couldn't find out where to do what. Didn't know that you had to go through an agency to work with CPS. And then they changed things and rearranged things. And in the middle of what we're doing, the only constant we had in our entire case with Ty was the judge because there's so much turnover because people are working so hard and they're underpaid and un understaffed and overwhelmed and so but we got it figured out obviously got it done and Ty came into our family almost two years ago and we went foster adopt through CPS but Ty was actually a legal risk which means that they're not completely in the clear and free, but because his case was so special, they uh, wanted to give us a shot. And we agreed to that with much prayer, much, much prayer. And when I say much prayer, it wasn't over a long period of time. They called and said, we've got somebody. And yeah, are you ready for you to get him? No, it was like a week. You have to decide by tomorrow. But how about adding and what was funny is we were looking for um, some specifics. We looked for um, a, we were looking for a little boy around Sophie's age. Um, just what we felt like that was the dynamic we were supposed to add to our family. And we prayed for him for a long time because we knew we were asking for um, a little boy. So we would pray for him as a family, and we didn't know what to call him because we didn't have his name yet. And so we would say, Lord, you know, please help little bro wherever he is and we would pray in the mornings you know Cliff and I would pray um, together and just say Lord wherever he is you know snuggle him up with that blanket cover him up um, let him be loved let him be healed and delivered before he ever gets to us just let let him know how awesome he is before he ever comes and so they called and said hey we've got this um, a, a little boy and he's not exactly the parameters you were looking for we know you were looking for um, Caucasian um, he's half African-American and we live on a ranch in the middle of West Texas and we knew that would shake things up especially in our small little community that is not the most culturally diverse community um, and Sophia is half Hispanic um, but kind of ruined our multicultural vibe because of the blonde highlights you can't really tell <laughs> we're trying to change the world and everybody's just making us look normal and um, so we but we thought well all right lord if this is what you got for us and we prayed literally 30 minutes I mean, we prayed and we're just still and listen and there's just this resounding peace just very like yep do it go for it and so we called back and said yes here we go and ty came that next week um one thing for the reality um of having a child come into your home is that they called us the day before and said, oh, by the way, there's some physical issues. Huh? What? What? And, and they, we were ready for him. We'd gotten clothes. I mean, we were prepared for a, our, our child to come home and said, hey, there's some physical issues. And we delved into them and thought, well, this is something we're willing to deal with. Um, and obviously, we were like, yep, we can do it. And I... Um, tickled to say that so many of them were spiritual and emotional just from what Ty had been through in his life um, and he's blessed he's been blessed since he was born he's 
um, not been through as much rough stuff as some kids for sure, but he has recovered and is thriving and has, I think Ty gained 25 pounds in the first three months he lived with us and grew about two inches, not even, not even kidding, not exaggerating. He's overcome the physical issues to where it's a very minor um, thing in our life where um, just a little bit of love goes a long way. And he, he literally, it was seamless. The first day Ty came to our house, I'll never forget, I met him in his sunglasses. <laughs> and um, before the day was over, Cliff was going to work. And Ty looked up at us and he looked up at Cliff and Cliff said, well, I gotta go to work. Um, I, did, did you wanna call me Cliff? Or, or And he just looked up and said, can I call you daddy? <laughs> and Cliff came out, his eyes this big. <laughs> I was call me daddy. And I, of course, I'm like, ah, it's so sweet. And then I meet him coming out of the bathroom, and he looks up, and he says, can I call you mama? And I said, oh, yes, you sure can. And I tried not to maul him immediately and overdo him. I was like, yes, sure, honey. You know, the mauling came later. Um, so that's how Ty has, he's just always been. We don't remember what it was like before Ty or Sophie. Cliff, what was the most difficult part of the licensing process and what was the most rewarding? The licensing process? Um, I think probably just uh, I don't know if I can't think of anything that was really difficult but the uh, some of the training seemed to be a bit redundant. You know, uh, uh, the uh, I think that was probably one of the things I dreaded the most was the training. But they really, uh, it, was, it was somewhat redundant, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Um, uh, I think one thing was uh, getting our house ready. Getting our house ready, uh, some of the things just seemed so petty to me at the time that we had to do. Uh, but uh, looking back on it now, it was probably better that the, to, to run a household the way that. Uh, CPS and the state recommended uh, for the safety of, of all our kids. Um, it's, but um, I, I, I don't know what would what would you say on the licensing part? Of it? Well, once again, Larson not having a constant. I guess that would be another problem. That we, that I would say was it. it's like every time we turned around, there was another obstacle with, with uh, having to do with the state or with the uh, with eight different agencies. So perseverance is definitely something that Absolutely. we're going to need to have. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. 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 You know, there were, uh, we uh, ran just a conflict with people. They just didn't see things the way that we saw them. And uh, just absolutely tried to stop us, tried to stop our adoption. And um, like I said, the Lord just laid his hand upon us. And like every time we turned around, we had another avenue to go. If you had one thing to encourage people in that were considering adopting through the foster care system or through private adoption, what would you encourage them in? I think uh, for me, the one of the things I was afraid of is that I wouldn't be able to love the adopted children the same way I love my own. I had that fear that I wouldn't be able to. And I knew that once we got the children in the home and, and, um, and um, with us, that, 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 that it would be something I could overcome. And obviously, it didn't take long at all of uh, but that was probably my, my biggest fear of all. And even with Sophia, you know, we'd had her from from birth. And so it was, it wasn't like we were bringing another child into our home, like someone else's child into our home, she was ours. And, um, and I was afraid that, that I wouldn't feel that way with, uh, with someone that had lived with someone else for a while, brought them in. And once he came in, obviously that, that fear was overcame that fear just like that. That's awesome. So, Caroline, you're the oldest. What was the whole process from the beginning? When, did you hear your parents talking about adoption? Or did it ever <laughs> cross your mind before they brought it up? No. I was, uh, I remember, I was playing with my littlest pet shops with my cousin in my room when I heard my mom and dad come home from a soil conservation conference. <laughs> It, it wasn't a soil conservation conference, 
came in holding a baby. <laughs> that was the first time I ever heard about Sophie. Um, we've been trying to adopt in the past, but it just hadn't worked out. But I am so happy we got Sophie. I, I think I screamed and jumped up and down, if I remember correctly. Now, what about the process with Ty? Were you a little bit more involved in that process? Um, I mean, I was more emotionally involved, but there was nothing I could honestly do to help with that. Right. But it was kind of an edge of your seat thing the whole time. That's awesome. What about you, Guy? How old were you when Ty's adoption took place? I think I was probably 12, and I was just excited to have a brother because I'd never had a brother before. Mm -hmm. I'd been around two girls for most of my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Sophia. And Ty, both of you, uh, you can take turns answering, but what does adoption mean to you? What's the best thing about adoption? Do you have an idea, Ty? Having a different family and a good family. Right. And you're able to see what family's all about. Yeah. Is it hard to think of something because it's all you've ever known? That says a lot right there. Yeah. Yeah, it sure does. Well, is there anything that you would want to share with families who are considering adopting? Is it for everybody? Are there other ways that you saw when you were involved in the process that people could get involved in children's lives without adopting? Absolutely. I obviously can't recommend adopting enough. Um, if you're willing to work through a lot of paperwork and a lot of bureaucracy and a lot of governmental stuff, which it's not that overwhelming if you have somebody to help you, you can ask questions. Um, and that's what these agencies are for, and I've, I've been impressed with what I've seen from the majority of them. But if you don't mind doing a little paperwork, a little work around your house, and you can turbo through it, it doesn't. the process does not have to take forever. If you're just the least bit aggressive um, and follow up yourself, you you can make it happen. It'll, it'll come um, to fruition for you. And as far as us going through the process ourselves, Respite care is always a need. Helps. There are definite rules that the government has in place because they have to have blanket rules, and that's just like everything else. Um, so no one could watch our children if they weren't certified. And to be certified, you just about have to be, um, to, to even babysit or do respite care, you almost have to be completely licensed as a foster parent anyway. So um, for people to step up and do that would be, Phenomenal. That was our greatest need. We've got a great support group with our church family, with our uh, biological families. So we're incredibly supported. But that would have been the thing that would have helped the most. And we we hope to change the perspective on CPS adoptions too. Because I was petrified. I was so scared to do it. And I'm not saying that it wasn't a battle. Um, and it was an edge of the seat. And there was a fight. But when when you're called to do it, you want to do it. I wouldn't enter into it lightly, um, but it's absolutely worth doing. Awesome. Thank you all for your time, for sharing your story, and I can't wait to see who it encourages to move forward next. Happy edit. <laughs> I know, I'm so used to like being able to edit my own When I mess up, I'm like, oh, I can't yeah, just, just start to run there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.